I've been waiting for this one, Arctic's new high-performing 92mm fan, it's 25mm thick, great value, it's the P9, and it's a cute little fan. Welcome to Machines and More. So for a while I ran the Noctua U9S in my NK71 as my daily driver. It was cooling a 10700K and that was with push-pull Noctua A9 fans. Those are good performing fans. They're a little bit less optimized in terms of noise and, uh, you know, unfortunately there's not too much else in the world of higher performing regular thickness 92 millimeter fans. There is a thermal right by a similar name, a TLP9, uh, that I am aware of but I haven't tested. Uh, but Arctic's P9 is the subject of today's review, and I think this is quite an interesting offering that many of you, especially those uh, into uh, the particular uses in SFF, will find uh, attractive. So a big thanks to Arctic for providing the test fans today, but uh, like all the reviews here, this is not a sponsored video, and this is my honest and objective feedback. So you can think of the P9 as a mini P12. So the P12 is one of Arctic's best fans. Uh, the P9 has a similar blade arrangement. It's got five big blades and it's actually a very simple fan. It's just a, you know, this one's the vanilla, uh, the black version. Uh, that's what I have here, a P9 PWM black. The RPM range is 200 to 3000 RPM. There's also a P9 Max they've also released and that goes up all the way to 4300 RPM. But the range of this normal one should be adequate, especially as a case fan. There's also a silent one that tops out at 1900 RPM if you don't need this high as well. But this one does have a zero RPM mode. So below 5% PWM, it'll shut off. And the PST signifies that you can daisy chain additional fans. So you don't need a fan splitter cable, just keep uh, connecting them in sequence. This cable is actually quite long at 400 millimeters. Um, the blade feels just like they do on the P12s. These uh, spin on a fluid dynamic bearing, just minimal movement, uh, play on the axle. Uh, quite basic, no rubber bumpers or anything, they just come with a set of fan screws. So in addition to the max skew and the silent skew, they're also doing a continuous operation or a CO version, which uses a dual ball bearing, and that's gonna have a different noise profile compared to this one, uh, it's a fluid dynamic bearing. So for most intents and purposes, I think this one right here, this is the skew to get, it's just your standard one. So my test system here is the NK72 with Strix X870 ITX. If you're doing air cooling in this case, I would recommend something like Thermal Rights PA120 Mini or the Noctua D12L since you can fit those bigger coolers versus the shorter U9S like I have here. But even if not, on a heatsink, 92 millimeter fans can be quite clutch in this case because they can go in the rear panel. Uh, if you're doing MATX setup, you can only fit 92 millimeter fans next to the MATX board on the main board panel as well. So uh, there are uses for that in this case. So I also purposely picked a CPU that the U9S can handle at slightly lower fan speeds. And that way we can get an idea of performance at a spectrum of RPMs. Uh, the 9800X3 that I had in this build is just too hungry, a power hungry for the setup without undervolting. So I used the 9700X. And that at the 65 watt TDP or 88 watt package power uh, setting matches up well with uh, what a 92 millimeter fan equipped cooler can handle. So these tests are all uh, noise normalized, measured 20 centimeters away from the case, so equal noise levels between the Arctic P9 and the Nacto NFA9, except for the max RPM level for the P9 because the P9 can go to a much faster and louder level than the A9. So for our lower noise test intervals, the P9 actually beats out the Nacto A9, so it's very impressive. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that at equal noise levels, the P9's design has a much higher RPM, about four to 500 RPM higher than the A9. At the two higher intervals, which correspond to 2280 RPM and 2560 RPM on the P9, the Noctua does uh, perform better at this higher end of the fan curve, uh, although the performance is still very close. So the particular P9 that I tested maxed out at 2920 RPM, the noise is quite a lot at that RPM, though it does give you some headroom if you need it. Uh, you shouldn't typically need to allow it to go this fast as a case fan. That really wouldn't make much sense, right? So let's just do some sound samples. In general, the noise profile, it's not displeasing, and I heard minimal motor noise, although there was a tiny bit of noticeable hum at certain points when that fan speed was uh, ramping up or down, like that transition 
uh, point. So overall, it's a very good fan in a sparsely populated PC fan segment. The performance is excellent at the moderate high 65 to 75% PWM level, and that's still quite good at the higher end of the fan curve. Uh, the max version of this fan, which is $10, will give you even more headroom if you need, and the standard black skew is especially good when you consider the price for these. You know, the standard one is only $8.50. So while it really makes sense if you're upgrading from a more generic fan or you need a few as case fans for your SFF build, it's also cheap enough that if you have a particular reason, such as uh, if you're looking for a little bit more performance or lower noise when you're pairing with a more moderate CPU, such as your 65 watt TDP AMD CPUs or your 9K Intel chips, you could you know, theoretically swap your A9 fan for this one. At a minimum, it's not a pricey experiment, right? So if you find yourself at the faster end of the fan speeds, I would still stick to the stock. A9 fan, it is still a very good fan. Uh, one thing to note, if you're using these as case fans and you have your fan curves indexing against the CPU temp, I would uh, absolutely dial it uh, down to a lower max RPM because your CPU could often get to 75 to 80 degrees or higher under load. And at that point, a lot of stock motherboard fan curves will run your case fans at 100%. Uh, you'll be adding a lot of unnecessary noise and it really doesn't make sense to run case fans at 3000 RPM. So definitely keep an eye out for that. So there you have it. I hope you enjoy the review. Please give a like, make sure you're subscribed. These do have retail stock now, so please uh, go ahead and check them out in the links down below. Big thanks for watching today.